This is the second video in the two-part series of Arduino IDE to Platform I.O. Click the link in the top right to take you to the first video in the series. The last video was all about installation and migration, such that we could cut a program right out of Arduino IDE, paste it right into Platform I.O. And this brings us right to the program that we've currently been working on. And now we're going to go over a weird idiosyncrasy that I found possibly in the hardware or a library in Platform I.O. I'd like to discuss first. First thing I want to do is set the serial speed and software to match the one I have in the config. We can see the one in the config is 115200. So go back there, change that from 9600, 115200. Now to demonstrate how the serial monitor works, I'm going to add a serial output to the terminal that shows the temperature every time it pulls the temperature on one of the screens. This could be screen one. So I'm just going to add a simple serial function. Notice as I write out the serial function that it completes for me serial.watt. So we're going to make it serial print. We could see the variety of options of print, print, printf, print line. Some other ones are listed here as well. We just could be using print obviously for this one. And just the word temperature. I'm going to cut and paste that again. Print out the value T of temperature as a print line, so it'll uh, carriage return. Clean this up a bit. Put my semicolons where they're supposed to be. And we're ready to push it. For all purposes, it looks the same coming back up, but I found a problem here and I got to point it out. I'm going to post the code so other people could try this out. I'm also going to post it into a couple of groups and see if perhaps there's a bug in a library somewhere. But everything looks fine right now, as you could see, until I press the button for the terminal. Once the terminal is brought up, it immediately and automatically shifts over to the heat index screen without pressing any button, no interaction. And then the interrupt for the screen shifting button is disabled GPIO zeros. Interrupt no longer works. I can still shift between Fahrenheit and Celsius. If I attempt to hit the restart button with the device connected in terminal, we'll see that is waiting for download on power on reset indication in the terminal. And if I do hit it again, it will come back up to that first screen. And because it's on that first screen, we could actually see the temperature is posting in serial, right? Everything's working, it appears to be fine. Now, if I press that top button, we can see the interrupts working and it switches over to Celsius, switching to Celsius in the terminal window as well. Switching back to Fahrenheit. But if I press that bottom interrupt and it does work once to take you back to the heat index, it does not work anymore. It's now stuck. That's it. And this only happens in Platform I.O., not Arduino IDE. So since it only affected one of the two buttons, I thought, why don't I just move it over to another GPIO and see if it follows the GPIO. So I moved it over to 13 since 13 was available. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to recompile it and I'm going to open the terminal again once it completes. This time it did not bounce to the other screen with the terminal open. We can see the temperature is displaying normally. Obviously, GPIO0 has no function, as we would expect. We get that blue wire right there I put in. The other button does have function. It works just fine, Fahrenheit to Celsius. That blue wire is connected to 5 volts. And if I touch to GPIO13, we can see it switches back and forth between temperature and heat index. Everything seems to be working just fine, as long as it's not on GPIO0. Lastly, we're moving from 0 to 13 when connected to the terminal. There are no issues hitting the reset button. They probably designed 0 to tie in with download, but it manifests with this interrupt issue, and that's just all there is. If you're working on a project where it might entail constructing the library as part of the project, your own personal library or somebody else's library adding to a project, in this case, I have a project. I'm creating a library called FT817 for a Yetsu ham radio, you can put it right in this lib directory here. We could see any number of libraries can be added within that lib directory. So I've pulled it out of Arduino where I have to edit it in the text editor because you can't edit libraries in Arduino. And I drag it right over to lib and I hit copy folder. We can see the whole directory copied right over under lib. One error has appeared as expected. 
My library requires another library called MD5. It's not one in the collection for Arduino. We're going to pull it right into the live directory just like we did the first library. Drop it in. Click copy folder. See MD5's files are there. And the errors have cleared from line four. It is no longer causing an issue. All dependencies have been met for this library. So let's give this homegrown library a whirl, see what we can do. We're going to start with include. And as I open this library up here, the drop down list appears and I scroll through it just to see what's what. And we could see it's actually in there, the header FT817. I select it from that list and I close it out. And I make my way down. I'm going to create an instance right here of FT817 construct it and I'm going to call it my uh, FT817 the FT817 my FT817 equals a new right FT817 and as I do this we can see that it shows the parameters at least it's showing uh, what it's expecting for data types because I haven't populated in the uh, actual code documentation for what the constructor should be but I happen to know it, so I'm filling it out right now. The the pins for the serial, the board rate, and some Boolean values to bring this to life. And, th and that's it right there. So now I have an, an instance, an actual object called my FT817. I've gone into the library and I've updated this information. So going back to the code, we could see that if I mouse over, now we have all sorts of information about what the values are. They correspond to the data types above. This looks a lot better. It's something I really wouldn't use in Arduino IDE, but I could also right click and go to the definition. And this takes us right to the code in question without having to search for it. Brings us to the definition, brings us right to the constructor. So that's pretty cool. And that's just one option for the highlight. Or I could actually go to the declaration in the header file for it and get information there or work on information. It's all very con convenient. You could go and click on that and take you to that based on that keyword which is uh, FT817 in this case. I don't have a radio hooked up to this ESP32, but it doesn't inhibit us from uh, interfacing with a couple of the functions of this object. So we're gonna do that now. Uh, the first one we're gonna do through my FT817, which we could see here as I select it. And as I start looking, there's a whole slew of different functions I could choose, but I'm gonna choose get version from the list of available ones. And I, obviously I didn't update the code to provide information because again, in, in Arduino, this wasn't really a thing. So it wasn't really important to do. But my FT817 get version is going to simply return the version. So I'm gonna make that a value of a serial print and return that to a print function, very simple. Next thing I can do again, my FT817 Again, a million different functions here, but specifically we're going to look for something easy, uh, set for both equals, and we can see this is Boolean. We're going to make it true. Next, we're going to set debug. We can see this is also Boolean. I've selected these because they don't require any hardware connected in order to function. We're going to set this also to true. And these are the, the three values that we should have uh, printed out. One of them is actual just a printout and the other two are actual functions that do something, but they do return content to the user. However, there's still more to be done and I'll explain. There's another function that needs to be executed because the output is, is muxed on this uh, FT817 library. There's another function called set out printer and we have to assign how it's going to output uh, information and we're gonna say that the output is gonna be serial. So it's gonna allow it to go to the serial interface whenever there's output content. And that should be sufficient for this library to allow things like verbose and debug information to appear in the serial interface. So we're gonna compile this. As the device boots and starts executing, we could see that our output for the temperature is intertwined with the output that we get from the functions of that library. For the FT817, we're seeing the version, and that is, a, uh, is an attribute that comes back from the library. 
as well as the uh, return from the uh, execution of set verbose, as well as set debug. And we can see those are scrolling up. Keep in mind that these libraries were installed with drag and drop and no modification. That's pretty cool. I showed in a previous project that required uh, JPEG files to be stored in SPIFFS from a data directory. A special software had to be added onto the Arduino IDE to push the data to the SPIFFS file system on the ESP32. Let me show how easy it is to do it on platform IO. We're just going to create a data directory within our project. Just call it data. And we're done. We don't have to work externally within the file system of the computer. And I'm going to grab uh, a JPEG really quickly, and I'm just going to drop it right in for a test. There you go. That's me a million years ago. Now, I don't have to install any third-party software to accomplish this. All I'm going to do is go to Terminal, and then I'm going to scroll down to Configure Tasks. And I'm going to scroll down and configure tasks to a particular task. It's called Upload File System Image. I'm just going to click on it. Then we see this appears within our project. We don't have to do anything with this at all. Matter of fact, we could just uh, minimize this. Close it right out. There we go. We're just right back to our project like nothing ever happened. But we can see that our file is located right there. Now when I go up to Terminal, then Run Task, then we could see Upload File System Image. And I'm going to just click on that. No problem at all automatically it's going to conduct these events it's going to connect to the device it's going to push all the files that's in the data directory and then it's going to finish just like it did with the uh, plugin that we had in arduino except there's no special software to install it just automatically happens and we could see when it finished it says right here that it was looking in data directory it found that one file test jpeg it pushed it there we go and that was it done And Platform I.O. is integrated with Git. This is incredibly useful if you're making libraries for the Arduino library uh, repository, allowing you to work on a library and publish it, make changes for uh, a new revision, make it available to all the people who are looking in the library manager, both in Platform I.O. and in Arduino IDE. And we can see as I look here, I type in one that I'm working on, Ball Valve and the latest release is made available. You do have to tag it though. Uh, your latest revision, you have to set it up and configure it for tagging. Make sure that's working. We can see my latest release is 104. Everything is set up here automatically. Once it's configured, it's working in Arduino. It's collected, I think on a bi-hourly basis, if everything's configured properly once you put in the request. And by virtue of the fact that it's configured in Arduino, we could see it here in platform IO. So. Both of them are done pretty much at the same time. This is Platform IO. Everything's set up. It already has a reserved keyword to uh, set it up in as a library. And this is what it looks like in Arduino as I type it in. The library's already installed. We see here 104. And the example program is set up in a directory structure to allow somebody to go to file examples, scroll down, and we should see ball valve, five wire valve, and there's our example program. So that works very nicely, Git, for library development in Platform IO. This about wraps it up for the Platform IO migration series. At this point, people could be searching for stuff on their own to find out how to migrate and integrate their projects. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Hit that subscribe button for more videos. Again, I'll post that link in the top right when new video comes out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?